first, I'd like to share a little historical information about New Orleans. New Orleans is one of the oldest cities in our nation. The history is vast and there's so much I could talk about. New Orleans was, a cla was claimed for the French crown by explorer Robert Cavalier, Sir de La Salle in 1682. La Nouvelle New Orleans was founded by Jean-Baptiste de Bienville in 1718 upon the slightly elevated banks of the Mississippi River, approximately 95 miles above its mouth. Engineers laid out the grid of streets with a Place d'Armes, today's Jackson Square, that would become known as the Vu Carre, the Old Square, or today's French Quarter. The outpost became the capital of the French colony of Louisiana in 1723. That same year, France ceded Louisiana to Spain to keep it out of the hands of the British. For the remainder of the 1700s, Louisiana was a Spanish colony, and Nueva Orleans functioned as an important trading and cultural partner with Cuba, Mexico, and beyond. It was during the Spanish colonial area that, that New Orleans transformed from a village-like environment of wooden houses to a city of sturdier brick buildings with an urban infrastructure, largely due to the unpaid labor of enslaved, enslaved people. Catalyzing the change were two disastrous fires, which together destroyed over a thousand old French buildings and new architecture codes were introduced shortly thereafter, resulting in splendid Spanish colonial style buildings, such as the Cabildo fronting today's Jackson Square. Other Spanish contributions include wrought iron balconies, patios, above ground cemeteries, and the city's earliest expansion, which is today's central business district. In 1800, the Spanish retroceded Louisiana back to France, only to have Napoleon sell the entire Louisiana colony, including New Orleans, to the United States as part of the $15 million Louisiana purchase in 1803. In 1840, New Orleans ranked as the third largest city in the nation, the largest in the South, and the fourth busiest port in the world. It had a population of 102,000 people. In two, its two primary ethnicities, the French-speaking Creoles and English-speaking Anglo-Americans competed for power and lived in largely separate areas. I enjoy staying right in the heart of the French Quarter of New Orleans. This is the oldest section of town and has a very unique style of architecture, both of French and Spanish influence. The French Quarter is the pea green square located on the map in front of you. I wanted to give you an idea of the location. So, um, and we're going to refer to the French Quarter quite often. The French Quarter is 13 blocks wide and six blocks deep. It is very walkable. When I travel outside of the quarter, there are different modes of transportation available and I will be discussing these later on. A few years ago, I discovered a hotel called the Place de Arms. It is located just off of Jackson Square, which marks the heart of the French Quarter. I will be using Jackson Square as a point of reference frequently. I usually arrive on a Monday. My hotel will allow parking before check-in, so sometimes we will arrive prior to noon and park the car. There have been times when we have been able to go right on in and check into our room. Other times they will hold on to our luggage so the car can be parked and we will receive a call when we can check in our room. One of the reasons I use this hotel is it does have a parking garage. Uh, that's something you'll wanna check into when you look at various accommodations um, in New Orleans because parking is quite the commodity. This is the courtyard of the hotel. Many of the hotels in the quarter have this design. You check in and then you make your way to your room through the courtyard. This particular courtyard has a relaxing sitting area and a pool area. And this is what one of the rooms look like. As you can see, there's plenty of space. And when you're sharing a room with several people for eight or nine days, this is very important. 
We usually try to find some place for lunch in the close vicinity and we'll shop a bit along Royal Street before checking in. We will then shop in Jackson Square area. And for dinner, we enjoy eating at a place right on Jackson Square. This picture was taken on the south side of our hotel on one of the public balconies. As you can see, we are very close to Jackson Square, which you can see in the background. You can see the spires of St. Louis Cathedral above um, Sherry's head. Sherry's my cousin. She's gone with me on so many of these summer trips. So you'll see her picture a lot as we make our way through this slide presentation. And um, we will then usually go off and shop in the Jackson Square area. Early New Orleans was centered on a location called the Place Arms, which literally means the place of weapons. The square was where the military practiced their maneuvers. On the north side of the square, there are three 18th century historic buildings, which were the city's heart in the colonial area era. The center of the three is St. Louis Cathedral. To the uh, left on your screen is the Cabildo, the old city hall, uh, now a museum where the final version of the Louisiana Purchase was signed. And the cathedral's right in the picture is the Presbytery, built to match the Cabildo. The Presbytery was initially planned for housing the city's Roman Catholic priests and other church officials. At the start of the 19th century, it was adapted as a courthouse, and in the 20th century, it became a museum. This is a picture of Jackson Square today with St. Louis Cathedral in the center. The Presbyterian Cabildo are also pictured. The Mississippi River is behind me. There are always carriages lined up on Jackson Square and all you need to do is approach the first in line and ask for a tour and they will give you a tour. The length of the tour depends on what price you pay. This is a very enjoyable way of seeing the most popular sites of the French Quarter and hearing some very interesting history and stories. The people of New Orleans love and are very proud of their city. And so the stories are always very exciting to hear and are passionately told. Here's another picture of the square aerial view. So you can see the oldest buildings, which include the cathedral, the presbytery and the cabildo. Notice the buildings which make up the sides of Jackson Square. On opposite sides of the square are buildings that are called the Pentalba Apartments. These were the first apartment buildings in the United States. They were designed by the Baroness Michaelia Pentalba. I like that because it was a very strong woman who designed these apartments. Her father was one of the architects for St. Louis Cathedral. And it's due to the Pentalba family that we have the Jackson Square that we have today. I traditionally enjoy having dinner at Cafe Pentalba, which is on the corner of the square. You can see in this picture, my cousin Sherry and I are making our way across the uh, part of the square. The cathedral is on the uh, in the picture to the right, and the red building is where we're headed. This restaurant, Cafe Pentalba, has big floor to ceiling doors, which are usually propped open. You can see the cathedral through one of the open center doors. I enjoy people watching and being able to see and hear all of the happenings on Jackson Square while you eat. There's usually some live musicians in the square, and it truly makes me feel as though I have arrived in New Orleans. The sights, the sounds, and of course, the food. Monday is traditionally red beans and rice day in the quarter. The tradition stems from Mondays being wash day. Mamas could put their red beans on the stove to cook all day and devote their full attention to the wash while their beans simmered on the stove. I always order some good red beans and rice and at many places it is served with a grilled slice of andouille sausage which makes it simply delicious. Usually after we have dinner, we go out and find some place to listen to music. 
I prefer classic jazz. So most of the places that I go to play classic jazz. There are plenty of places to see and hear good music. There are many venues on Bourbon Street that have cover bands, but there are only a few places in the city that actually play classic jazz. One of my favorite places is Fritzl's European Jazz Bar. Pictured in the center of this picture is Kate, and I'll tell you a little bit about her later. But this is Fritzl's. As you can see, the band is up in the corner with audience sitting on benches with plank tables in front of them. The show begins every night at eight o'clock. We usually are in our seats at 7.30 to make sure we get a good seat. They don't charge a cover charge. All you have to do is buy a drink every set. And this doesn't have to be alcohol. It can be a bottle of water. The band will play for 45 minutes, then take a 15 minute break. They will usually play four sets a night. And that is where we will usually stay unless there is someone else or other music that we wish to see and hear. We are sitting in the front row which is where we like to be. As you can see, there's a microphone in the lower part of the picture. After so many years of going to New Orleans, we have developed a list of our favorite musicians and I will plan out our week as many of the venues list who will be appearing in advance. This for instance is Tom Fisher. He plays somewhere every day of the week. He is an accomplished clarinetist and leads many of the groups. We usually stay until midnight and make our way back to our hotel, which is just about a three block walk from Fritzl's. The next morning, we will begin our first full day. We'll explore what I call the French market area. The location of the French market and of New Orleans dates back to the Choctaw Indians before the Europeans settled the New World. The Choctaw Indians used this natural Mississippi River levee location to trade their wares to river traffic. The early European settlers came by boat to this location to sell produce and dairy products. The city of New Orleans was established on this location of the Mississippi River in 1718. This old New Orleans is called the Vu Carre or French Quarter. We will first have breakfast at the Cafe du Monde. You cannot visit New Orleans without having beignets and a cafe au lait at the Cafe du Monde. The Cafe du Monde is the third oldest restaurant in the city of New Orleans. The building was known as Butcher's Hall and was built in 1813. This picture is obviously taken during the COVID pandemic as everyone is physically spaced, but usually this hall is jam packed with tables and people. The original Cafe du Monde is a traditional coffee shop. Its menu consists of dark roasted coffee, and chicory and beignets, white and chocolate milk and fresh squeezed orange juice. The coffee is served either black or ole. Ole means that it is mixed half and half with hot milk. Beignets are square French style donuts lavishly covered with powdered sugar. And in 1988, iced coffee was introduced to the cafe and also soft drinks but we always just love having our cafe au lait and beignets. The beignets come three in a bag for $3. Um, it's really interesting to watch. It's open 24 seven. You can go there early, early in the morning, or you can go there any time of day. I've gone there at 1230 or one o'clock in the morning after we listen to music. It's a fun place to be with a fun crowd. After we finish our breakfast, we begin making our way down to Cater to North Peters Street. There are many shops along the way. One of my favorite places to stop is Aunt Sally's, Sally's Praline Shop. You can stand at the window and watch someone making pralines. Pralines are um, a recipe uh, that was brought by the French settlers to Louisiana where both sugarcane and pecan trees were plentiful. 
in the 19th century, emancipated black women substituted pecans for almonds, added cream to thicken the confection and thus created what became known through the American South as the praline or praline. Pralines have a creamy consistency similar to fudge. They're usually made by combining sugar, often brown sugar, butter, cream or buttermilk and pecans in a pot over medium high heat and stirring constantly until most of the water has evaporated and it reaches a thick texture with a brown color. Then it's usually dropped by spoonfuls onto wax paper so it can cool. As you head down to Decatur, it splits. And in the fork of the road, there's a park with a statue of Joan of Arc in it. France erected the statue in 1972 as a gift to New Orleans, whose namesake, Orleans, was one of the towns Joan of Arc defended from the English during the Hundred Years' War. In the city's defense, she was overwhelmingly successful, but her exploits did not stop there. In just over a year, this teenager led troops in 13 different battles and sieges and captured more than 30 cities. The French market buildings are seven buildings that begin with the Café du Monde building and end at this, the French market. The first part of the building is mostly food vendors on the right and stalls of art, jewelry, spices, hat sauce, clothing, paintings, photography, jams, jellies, preserves, and many other items. The second part of the buildings are stalls and booths of much of the same items. You can buy just about any souvenir you want in these buildings. After we finish at the French market, we cross Decatur and begin to head back toward Jackson Square. It's about time for lunch by this time. There are many shops along this side, and usually we'll stop in at the Central Grocery for lunch. It's located on Decatur Street in the middle of the New Orleans French Quarter, and they're operated uh, by a third generation. It's an old fashioned grocery store, which was founded in 1906 by Salvatore Lupo, a Sicilian immigrant who is famous for creating the muffaletta sandwich. And this is the muffaletta sandwich or a muffaletta. It is layered with meats and cheeses and an olive relish. It is then baked until it is warm throughout and the top is crusty. We usually buy a half sandwich because believe me, that quarter is more than filling. This is also a way to eat cheap in New Orleans. A half sandwich is $11. So for $5.50, we get a pretty substantial meal and many people that I go with can't even eat their quarter sandwich, let alone, um, so it's, it is really big and it's, it's plenty. We also like to go to Frank's, which is uh, right next door to the central grocery because they also offer a good muffaletta sandwich. It kind of just depends on how busy each place is, which one we choose to eat at. Late afternoon after the noon mass is a great time to visit St. Louis Cathedral. This is one of New Orleans most noted landmarks. Citizens have been worshiping on these grounds since 1727. A fire in 1788 burned the original building. In 1789, the new and current building was begun and it was finished in 1794. It was dedicated as a cathedral and the first service was Christmas Eve service in 1794. In 1819, the clock and bell were purchased from Paris and is still being used today. The inside is exquisite. And I like to attend mass there at least once when I visit. It is truly like worshiping inside a work of art. Another site to see on the square, this time the east side in the Pentalba buildings is the 1850 House and Museum. Few places offer the chance to experience the lifestyle of our ancestors for more than 150 years ago. 
1850 house is one of these rare places. It offers a glimpse of the upper middle class life in New Orleans, the most prosperous period in the city's history. It doesn't represent any single family's house, rather it reflects mid 19th century prosperity, taste and daily life in New Orleans. It's furnished with art and decor that speak to that area era as well. We usually shop around there um, in the square. There's plenty of shops. We may stop for a refreshing drink as there's many cafes and coffee shops throughout the area. A statue of note is the statue of General Jackson in the center of the square. General Jackson led the forces against the British in the Battle of New Orleans. The statue was commissioned at that time to honor him and his brave and valiant efforts. Several years later, he became our seventh president. The statue is of artistic significance because it was the first cast iron statue that has a horse with two feet off the ground a literal physics marvel at the time because the statue weighs about 15 tons. We may stop and listen to some street musicians and a word on that, there are always musicians on every street corner and in Jackson Square at every moment of the day and night. Some of these musicians are extremely accomplished. In fact, many are students of music at local colleges, and this is how they make money to pay their tuition. I make it a rule to always have money on hand, so if I stop and enjoy their performance, even if it is one song, I always try to throw money in their buckets. I like to go back to my hotel in the heat of the day and take a nap. This allows me to be able to enjoy dinner and some late night music. One of our favorite places to dine is Broussard's. Um, last summer, we were able to meet and chat with the executive chef, Jimmy Setchum. They have a lovely pre-fee menu for dinner, which is one of the deals that we like to take advantage of. Broussard's opened in 1920. It features French and Creole cooking. During its 100 year celebration, their pre-fee dinner was $19.20. See what they did there, $19.20, which includes three courses. You can find deals like this all over the quarter in the summertime. This is the appetizer I enjoyed during our last visit. It's deep fried oysters with a lemon ginger hot sauce whipped up by the chef that morning. One of the special treats at Broussard's is to order Bananas Foster, which is prepared table side. Bananas Foster is a dessert made from bananas and vanilla ice cream with a sauce made from butter, brown sugar, cinnamon, dark rum, and banana liqueur. The butter, sugar, and bananas are cooked, and then the rum is added and ignited. The bananas and sauce are then served over ice cream, and it is simply delicious, although it doesn't look, uh, look so, but Trust me, it is scrumptious. And last summer, I actually was given a quite a treat. Uh, the chef brought me this beautiful Christmas ornament to hang on my tree as a nice memento of our visit. After dinner, we may wander down to the Montleon Hotel, another one of my favorite music venues. It's home to the Carousel Lounge, which is a revolving bar. Many authors, including Ernest Hemingway, William Faulkner, Tennessee Williams, Truman Capote, and Winston Groom, the author of Forrest Gump, are among the famous authors who have enjoyed hanging out at the Carousel Bar. It is mentioned in many books, including The Rose Tattoo by Tennessee Williams, Orpheus Descending, and The Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. We enjoy the entertainment that is provided. Again, it is free. Pictured here is one of my favorite performers, Nio Jones, who performs many cover classes, classics and is superbly energized. We also enjoy listening to Lena Prima, who is the daughter of Louis Prima. I apologize, this picture does not have very good pixelation, but uh, Lena is standing in the center of all of us. Um, her father, Louis Prima, is best known for providing the voice of King Louis in the Disney movie, The Jungle Book. 
He sang, I want to be like you. She also delivers a very high energy show of covered classics. Again, it's a free show right there in the carousel bar of the Montleone Hotel. And that's how I would typically spend my first whole day in New Orleans. On to a possible third day schedule. I will send people out to the Garden District. Um, the way you get to the Garden District, I like to walk all the way down Royal Street to Canal Street. And to give you an idea of where the Garden District is located, if you see the French Quarter is the peach colored square on the map directly above the bend in the river. And if you look over to your left, you will see the Garden District, also a peach colored square. Um, and we will take the trolley, not the trolley, sorry. You call it a streetcar in New Orleans. So we're gonna catch the streetcar on the other side of Canal Street on St. Charles and ride it the whole way to the end. It costs $1.25 in exact change to board. So make sure you have plenty of quarters and dollar bills when you go to New Orleans. You can get off at any stop you want, but you will have to pay $1.25 to board each time. The Garden District is full of gorgeous Spanish Gothic architecture, and you will see some of the most beautiful homes in New Orleans as you ride by on the streetcar. Uh, you may want to stop at the second oldest cemetery in town. It's not too far from the St. Charles Avenue streetcar stop. Um, it is the Lafayette Cemetery number two. And I just provided this picture to show you how it's just smack dab in the middle of the suburb. The streetcar goes all the way out to Carrollton. It will stop. You'll need to get off. They will turn the car around on a turntable, flip all the seats, and you will reboard. And on the way you back, you may wish to want to um, stop and have lunch. Uh, one place I recommend is the Camellia Grill. This is a really fun place. There are three islands that jut out into the restaurant. You have to be a, a longtime employee or cook before you get to be a waiter or waitress in one of the jutted out sections. And you basically come in, sit down. It's a very interactive place. This uh, is a very deceiving picture because usually it is jam packed. Um, the waiters are trained to be so communicative and helpful and give great tips for anyone who's traveling there. It's just a fun old fashioned diner that serves um, diner grub. I always like to stop at the uh, library. One of the New Orleans libraries is right off of St. Charles Avenue and there's a stop right in front of it. Um, it is the Milton Ladder Memorial Library. It was built by a Mr. and Mrs. Mark Isaacs in 1907 and is set on an entire city square of ground. And um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place to visit uh, with a lot of the original woodwork um, and decorations, uh, Flemish style uh, mantles, the mirrors and chandeliers were imported from Czechoslovakia. The mahogany for the paneling and staircase came from South America. There are original muros and German uh, mottos in uh, one of the rooms. Uh, they have uh, fresco ceilings. It's just a beautiful, beautiful building. The Southern Food and Beverage Museum is also not too far off of the St. Charles Avenue trolley line. Obviously, we don't do all of these things I'm telling you on one day. You have to kind of pick and choose. But the museum, uh, while based in New Orleans, examines and celebrates all of the cultures that have come together through the centuries to create the South's unique culinary heritage. And it is about a three block walk from one of the streetcar shops, stops. <laughs> um, another restaurant that's right off of the St. Charles uh, streetcar line is Mother's. And it is famous, famous, famous for its po' boy sandwiches. 
It usually has a line a mile long. You go in, you walk through the counter, put place your order, and then go and try to find a table. There's uh, three big rooms filled with uh, tables and chairs. It serves, like I said, the most famous, uh, the po' boys, but also serves red beans and rice, a lot of the New Orleans cuisine. It's open for breakfast or lunch. Sometimes on our way back, we will stop at the New Orleans Pharmacy Museum. It's open Wednesday through Saturdays from 12 to 5. Louis DeFilho Jr. of New Orleans became America's first licensed pharmacist in the early 1800s. So this is technically the first pharmacy in the United States. It is filled with old medicine bottles, old medical equipment. Um, there are tours that where very informed individuals um, regale us with stories of medical practices, some of which are absolutely horrifying. We have learned quite a lot in the last 200 years when it comes to medicine. Another day that we may um, spend in New Orleans is to shop Magazine Street. I wanted to show you this map. Um, the bright yellow is St. Charles Avenue, which we rode the day before, the, the streetcar. Below it, you'll see a Golden Street, Magazine Street. It is six miles long. And it is full of uh, shopping, cafes, and boutiques. And what we generally do is we will park and then we will walk a few blocks up one side, down the other, come back to the car, drive up a few blocks. And this is how we tackle Magazine Street. And we'll have lunch at one of the cafes, stop at the coffee shops for a cool, refreshing drink. We like to end our day at Hanson's Snow Blitz. Now, this is a very old establishment in New Orleans. It's the original snowball place. A snowball is very finely shaved ice like snow. Uh, this one is my particular favorite. It's called the Strawberry and Cream Snowball. It's shot full of strawberry syrup and then sweetened condensed milk is poured on top and pools in the center. Sounds unappealing, but trust me, it is delicious. In fact, one of my younger cousins who is quite the foodie raved about that she never imagined that something like this would taste so good. I sincerely crave them every single year. That evening, we may go down to Bourbon Street and eat on a balcony. Um, this is a fun way to people watch. Uh, it's just a beautiful, cool way to enjoy eating outside and just watching the sunset, watching the sights. Um, usually, we like to go to a place called Cornette's. Uh, I'll give you an example of what we might eat, alligator bites with a dipping sauce and bread pudding. And these saving, servings are so big, we can divide this into three pieces and still be stuffed. We'll go out and seek some entertainment. We discovered a new music venue last summer called the Mahogany Jazz Lounge. Uh, remember Kate, the lady that was standing in the middle of the picture at Fritzel's? Well, she was the hostess at Fritzl's for years and decided last year to buy this venue. Many of the musicians who play here also play at Fritzl's and Maison Bourbon and many other places during the week. Our next day, you may wish to tour the French Quarter. Now, again, I'm going to tell you a lot to do in the French Quarter. Uh, you can't do it all in one day. You can try but you might wear yourself out. Uh, let me remind you that the borders are Esplanade to the east, Canal to the west, and Rampart to the north. 
The French Quarter has so many historical buildings and sites, it's really difficult to see it all in one visit. But I'm going to try to tell you about as many as possible. This building is my favorite building in the French Quarter. You probably recognize it because it has been featured in so many movies and commercials. It is the La Branch House. It was built in the 1830s by a sugar planter. The ironworks is entwined oak leaves and acorns and is one of the most exquisite examples of ironworks in the quarter. Last summer, it was being painted. So that's why it looks a little odd and you see the scaffolding um, up on the different balconies. The Ursuline Convent um, is on the west side, uh, sorry, the east side of the quarter toward Esplanade. In 1727, nuns from the Ursuline Convent in Normandy went to New Orleans to find a convent, run a hospital, and take care of educating young girls. This is the finest surviving example of French colonial public architecture in the country, states the National Park Service. It is by some accounts the oldest structure in New Orleans, and it was built between 1748 and 1752, declared a National Historic Monument in 1960. It has the original 1730s Cypress Staircase, and original stained glass windows. And as you can see by one of the paintings in the convent, it's the oldest institution of learning for women in the present United States of America. The chapel is also just exquisite to go around and look at all the pieces of art. Right across the street from the convent is the Beauregard Keys House. Um, it is currently a museum focusing on some of the past residents, most notably Confederate General Pierre Gustave Toutant Beauregard, one of the most famous generals in the Civil War, and American author Francis Parkinson Kyes. Francis Kyes was married to a former governor of New Hampshire who became a United States senator. She wrote over 50 novels, the most famous being a mystery called Dinner at Antoine's. A block north of the Kai's house on the corner of Royal and Governor Nichols is the LaLaurie Mansion. I can tell you so much about this mansion, but you might just want to look it up on the internet. Madame LaLaurie was a wealthy New Orleans socialite and a notorious, a notorious woman. She did some unspeakable, unimaginable, horrific things. Um, she moved into this mansion with her husband in 1832. Uh, this uh, character and this home was featured in American Horror Story. It's allegedly the most haunted building in New Orleans. It was owned by um, Nicolas Cage, the actor, for a, quite some time. And this is the day that we will most likely go to Antoine's for our lunch. Antoine's was, uh, has been uh, operated by the same family for over 180 years. It set the standard for uh, great dining in, in the world. Oysters Rockefeller was entered here or was invented here. And they have a wonderful summer food special. It is whatever the year is. So this summer, it will be $19 and no, $20 and 22 cents for a three course meal. It's one of those deals that you just cannot pass up. Pirates Alley is one of my favorite little streets in New Orleans. It's very colorful and quaint with a lot of balconies and ironworks. Um, you'll see a lot of balconies and galleries in New Orleans. The difference is that a gallery is a lot wider and will stretch over the girth of the sidewalk and will usually be supported by post. These are balconies. Notice the blue doors above my head. It is a bookshop. It's the former home of author William Faulkner. He wrote his first book, a Pulitzer Prize winner called Soldier Pay here, and it is now a deliciously wonderful bookstore. I'm going to speed up here. I've got about 10 more slides, but I'd like to leave 
some time for any questions for any if anyone has any questions. Um, 632 and a half St. Peter Street is where Tennessee Williams lived when he wrote a streetcar named Desire. Notice it is a gallery with supporting posts and he lived on the top floor. You can see the white windows up at the top. Just a fun architectural note I'd like to call your attention to is something the residents call Romeo spikes. These are part of the iron that has been attached to the post. The lore says it was put there by concerned fathers who didn't want gentlemen climbing the posts up to the bedrooms of their daughters. They're called Romeo spikes because when the gentleman once uh, goes up, he's a Romeo, but when he slides down, he becomes a Juliet. Now, this is just some of the fun stories that are told. Truly, they are just there for protection and keep people from climbing the posts to gain access to the household. Lafitte's Blacksmith Shop is located on the corner of Bourbon and St. Philip Street. It was built between 1722 and 1732. It's reputed to be the oldest structure used as a bar in the entire United States. It is, uh, has no electricity. So there's candlelight that lights this place. It's fun to go to and stop in to see. A 200 year old landmark that's as casual and unique as its French Quarter surroundings. The building's first occupant was the mayor of New, uh, New Orleans from 1812 to 1815. He offered his residence to Napoleon in 1821 as a refuge during his exile. Napoleon never made it, but the name struck. This is the Napoleon House. It's one of the 10 oldest restaurants in New Orleans. We enjoy the bruschetta bread and the muffalata salad. That bread is a half a loaf, costs six bucks. We can divide it in thirds and have dinner basically for $2 a piece. Just one of those little helpful tips I like to share. Legends Park is where we may end up that night. It is um, located at the east end of Bourbon Street. And for all of the noise on Bourbon Street, this little courtyard is very quiet and peaceful. And there's usually a band playing in it with lots of seating, little bistro tables and chairs to relax and listen to the music. Mardi Gras World is a fun place to visit at least once. It's a 300,000 square foot warehouse in which the crews build and store their floats. Tickets are about $22 less for children and seniors and military veterans. An activity that I've enjoyed several times is to book a cruise on a steamboat. There are several cruise options, including a lunch or dinner cruise, a jazz cruise, a historical cruise. Also, the city of Algiers Point is directly across the Mississippi. It's a city just as old as New Orleans and has some interesting shops and restaurants. And there's a ferry that goes from New Orleans to Algiers many times throughout the day. A one-way ticket costs $2. Or if you're a senior, a dollar. Plantation Alley is about a 45-minute drive outside of New Orleans. There are so many plantations to see. Going clockwise, I'll tell you the ones that um, I have been to, Oak Alley is one of the finest preserved plantations and is res very respectful to the fact that, yes, plantations did have slaves. But I really appreciate the way that each of these plantations is respectful about that subject. Um, another evergreen with that beautiful curved staircase. Um, down below the white um, Whitney Plantation. And then to the bottom left is the Laura Plantation, which is a Creole plantation, which I learned a lot about the Creole culture when I went there. A trip we enjoyed taking last summer was to Avery Island. I've always wanted to visit there. It's the birthplace of Tabasco pepper sauce. And it's been owned for over 180 years by the same interrelated families. And uh, the island is on a salt dome. And they use the salt as both an ingredient in the Tabasco, but also as a preservative. And there is a restaurant there. We enjoyed shrimp etouffee and boudin. Um, 
egg rolls. Boudin is a, a dish made with sausage, rice, and spices. The factory tour includes the greenhouses, the warehouse where the pepper is stored in barrels topped with rock salt for three years before it is sent to the factory where water and spices are aided, added to create Tabasco sauce. There is a museum and a wildlife sanctuary. I wish I had time to share more photos. It was so beautiful. It's a self-guided car tour. There are many alligators, so it is encouraged you stay in your car or just be very aware if you get out of your car. We must have seen about 30 alligators that day as we made our way through the park. Cemeteries, there are plenty. The oldest is St. Louis number one. It is just across uh, Rampart Street, which as you remember, I told you was the Northern border of the French Quarter. Uh, there are others to tour which are equally fascinating. I showed you a picture of the second oldest one, which is Lafayette number two over in the Garden District. And the angel you see at the top right of the photo is in a family mausoleum in Metairie Cemetery, which is just a few mile, miles north of New Orleans. Tours, tours, tours. There are so many historical, literary, tours about famous women, tours about the history of slavery, food tours, cemetery tours, vampire tours, carriage tours, you name it. I've taken about six different tours. I've enjoyed every one of them. Like I said, the people are so passionate and proud of their heritage and love to tell stories about their rich history. St. Augustine's Catholic Church is located a block north of the French Quarter in Treme. It is located on the corner of St. Nichols and Henriette de Lille Street. St. Augustine was dedicated in 1842. It has been fully integrated since 1842. Think about that. White and colored people, both free and enslaved since 1842. It became the most culturally diverse congregation in the United States and is still in operation with a jazz mass every Sunday, which is wonderful to attend. I have to mention the restaurant. We're getting close. Hang in here with me, folks. I must mention the restaurant Dookie Chase. Dookie Chase's restaurant is up in Treme. It was opened in 1941. Um, by uh, Dookie Chase Sr. and his wife. Then his son took it over and he married uh, Leah Chase, who I got to meet. Uh, she would introduce one of the first African-American fine dining restaurants to the country. And it was a landmark for many civil rights discussions over the years. And a note, if you have ever seen the movie by Disney, The Princess and the Frog, Princess Tiana was modeled after Mrs. Chase. We were welcomed into her kitchen a few years ago when at the age of 97, she apologized to us for greeting um, us sitting down. She'd been in her kitchen since seven o'clock that morning. Uh, we like to go to our nodes. We usually save that to the last uh, day in town. I do wanna talk a little bit about some of the materials we have here at the library. We've got a large number of travel books, nonfiction books that cover a number of topics, music, history, Katrina, true crime, of course, cooking. We have a number of fiction books that are set in New Orleans. One of my favorite authors is Lisa Jackson, um, kind of gruesome serial killer type. So it is kind of a um, a uh, scary read, but we've got James Patterson, Heather Graham, Laura Childs. We also have a number of DVDs, movies, and television series that are set in New Orleans, including NCIS, Queen Sugar, wonderful movies, Girls Trip, A Little Bit of Heaven, All That Glitters, and The Hours. And thank you so much for attending our program. Um, I would love to take any questions if there are any questions. Does anyone have any question? What was the name of the hotel that you stayed in? Uh, the one that I stay in is called the Place de Arms. It's P-L-A-C-E, capital D, apostrophe, capital A-R-M-E-S. It was a great presentation and really interesting. So thank you. Oh, 
thank you so much. I, I love the city. I've been there, like I said, 15 times. I go back every year and there's always something new to see and do. I kid you not. I, there's still, I'm already making notes about what I want to do on my next visit that I've never say, seen. How long does it take you to travel there by car? I usually drive down um, and I get pretty far down into um, Mississippi and spend the night. And then I, cause I like to go in early in the morning as I can, cause it's almost like getting a whole extra day down there. So I like to go in and um, try to have lunch in the city, but it is about a 12 hour drive total, which is just a little much, uh, especially if you need to take rest area stops, gasoline stops, food breaks, potty breaks. And where do you like to stay in Mississippi when you stop? Oh, I try to make it down to um, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I have gotten down as far as Slidell, which is right across Lake, Lake Pontchartrain from New Orleans. It's about um, 25 minutes away from New Orleans. That also kind of saves us, if we spend that night outside of New Orleans, it saves us the, the cost of spending the night in New Orleans, which, you know, there's various price ranges. It can run the gamut. Anybody else? I think there was one question from Lori that asked what the weather is like. Oh, Lori. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yes. In Now I go in the summertime. It is, is hot, but I, it's manageable. I mean, you know, you're in the deep south, so um, you dress appropriately. Uh, that is why I like to take an afternoon break during the heat of the day. I like to tr uh, try to act like a, like a true southerner and uh, relax and cool down in the middle of the day. There's only been two summers that have really been hot. And one was last summer, it, we were up uh, 98 degrees about three, three times during that trip. And that was a little oppressive, but you find ways of getting around it. Um, all the restaurants and stores are air conditioned. So you just, you know, duck into a store when you get a little warm or sit down and have a cool drink. Um, ideally, when maybe when I'm retired, I might go in April or October. I've been in April. It is absolutely lovely then. You don't have to worry about the oppressive heat. You also might want to take an umbrella because it is notoriously known that it will have a little shower of rain about once or twice a day. And it's just very brief. It just kind of cools everything down and then everyone goes on their way. Hope that answered your question. Anyone else have any questions? Well, thank you so much for coming tonight. You can contact me anytime here at the Goshen Branch Library. If you're planning on going and you think of a question that you haven't asked tonight, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Please join us next Monday night where we'll be exploring Alaska. The description says, um, visit a muskox farm, explore a ghost town, float among icebergs, walk on a glacier, jet boat into roaring rapids and get up close with bears. Sounds like you're going to have a great time with Emily from Williamsburg next Monday night. Thank you so much for joining us and please support your local library.